Another thing I want to bring out here is that, um, or bring up rather, is that if you remember the 1909 Ticker and Investment Digest article, there were, it, uh, that article showed up in issue two of volume five, in other words, volume five, issue two, or 52. The first page number within the article shown was 52. The article started on page 51. And the article proper had 51 paragraphs in it, and there was one little addendum type paragraph at the very end of it to make it 52 paragraphs. So the structure of that article is nearly identical in having to do with 52 as the structure of this. In other words, the number 51 shows up, and then the number 52 shows up if you look at it the right way. So you need to take that into account, those kind of things into account. And to be honest with you, GAN has GAN had what three major square overlays? He had the square of 90, he had the square of 144, and he had the square of 52. But the square of 52 was a special square, and there's a reason for that. His square of 90 was 90 by 90. His square of 144 was 144 by 144, but his square of 52 was not its namesake. It was actually 104 by 104. In other words, it was two instances of 52. Okay, so one thing that you might want to search is his master calculator uh, course or whatever it was from the late 50s. I think his square of 52 master calculator course came out in 54 or 55, something like that. But it, it's a PDF. You can get it in PDF, and you should be able to find it pretty easily. And read that, because it will be eye-opening to you if you have not already read through that and studied it. But, uh, so, that's his square overlays. The 52, the square of 52 is special because it has two. It's not one of, it's two. So keep that in mind. If we move forward in this book... We have a date given here, which is Robert Gordon's birthday. And then we have a date right here in that first sentence, also June 10th. But then we have Robert Gordon's actual birthday. And then it talks about the San Francisco earthquake, which is just seems like a flippant little thing to put out there. San Francisco earthquake where she lost her first son. And, well, if you'll do some research, again, that's where the underlying research helps you of things that are not necessarily going to be found out in this book. In other words, you're not going to find out about Texarkana in this book and know that it's on the border. You're not going to find out the date of the San Francisco earthquake in this book, but that's all stuff that you can easily find just in reference material. And that San Francisco earthquake took place on April 18th, 1906, which is 52 days before his birth. Okay. So there's a second reference to 52 right there. Now, if you paid close attention to that, April is the fourth month, right? Four, and then the date of the earthquake was the 18. So 418, that's actually the number of pages in this book, right? So maybe that wasn't a coincidence either. So those are the kind of things that you need to be looking at making note of when you're first going through it or even if you've gone through it five or six times if you find something it's very likely that you won't be able to understand it right away but you just need to make a note of it and keep your notes fairly well organized so that when something clicks you go like wait a minute i remember that or maybe for instance the san francisco earthquake you read about it much later in the book and you're like hey wait a minute that was on the first page so then you can make reference to that later and make connections with it. Let's see, marking off my thing here. Now, so I'm going to show you another thing here. Let's count. We know that there are 52, or there's actually 51 words in this first sentence, but we can count it as 52 because Texarkana is split in half. But this allows us to take 51 and divide it by 2 and have a middle word, okay? So what that means is there is a word in the middle, then there's 25 words on one side and 25 words on the other side. So the 26th word in this sentence is the middle word 
of 51 words. Does that make sense? So if you count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, you'll find that the word morning is the word that's halfway through the sentence. You would want to do research on that word. For instance, how many times does the word show up in the book? See what the first page it showed up on was, what the last page it showed up on was. Try and gain information about it. You'd want to do a numerological count of that number because Gann used, without question, Pythagorean numerology in this book. And if you don't, if you're at all confused about what I mean when I say Pythagorean numerology, go on the internet and look up Pythagorean numerology and you will have your answer. Okay? There should be zero confusion about what I mean when I say Pythagorean numerology. The numerology of the word morning is actually 45, which is really interesting. If you're going to have a 45 degree angle, which cuts right through the middle of your square, then you see where I'm going with that, okay? See how that kind of clicks together there? It would make sense. And, but like I said, when you start, you wouldn't know this initially. But if you're looking, if you're making the counts, you're seeing what's halfway through, you're seeing what the numerology is of it. Um, now that we know that morning, the word morning, is halfway through our very first sentence, it's the 26th word in the sentence, it has a numerology of 45, and it shows up in the book 69 times, then maybe there's a, in quotes, hidden meaning to this word, and you can see how what the clues you can find here might apply to the uh, every time this word shows up in the book. Okay. Now let's look at the foreword really quickly. Now the foreword in the book has how many words in it? The answer is 484. Okay. We have one, two, let's Let's start over here. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten paragraphs in the foreword. I'm just going to tell you that's important. The number of words in the paragraph, the foreword rather, <clears throat> are important. 484 is the square of 22. In other words, 22 times 22 is 484. Okay, so that, that's there for a reason. Make note of that. Uh, it says in the foreword to read the book three times. It mentions three days and seven days. Robert Gordon, seven days. Jesus rose on the third day, rested on the seventh day. So it's bringing up numbers here, seven and three specifically. So you might do things like divide 484 by three. See what that comes out to. 484 by seven. See what that comes out to. Make note of things like that. Okay. 